in broader linguistics, um, there are others who, when they're talking talking about discourse analysis, are are actually attending not so much um, to you know that I'm what I'm talking about how the details of the language highlight the relationships between texts, but they're more interested in how texts have an effect societally, um, and so in this other definition of discourse analysis, um, we're attending to things like um, how, you know, it, it's really becoming more of a hermeneutical issue of how does um, my, you know, understanding of genre, um, cultural expectations about how different, um, uh, you know, how, how different um, linguistic phenomena will affect me socially, that, that is going to be a different, uh, just a completely different set of questions from what I'm asking, which is how does the language um, show me the relationship mm. between texts? Yeah. And so on that point, then, if we're looking at the language and trying to understand the relationship among texts and trying, therefore, to understand better the the logical flow and the message of those texts, how does discourse analysis relate to other other studies, other investigations right. of those texts and you have a section in your books i should say this is largely you've written roughly the first half of this book um yeah. in in tandem with with uh, dr putnam but you um describe how discourse analysis can provide a foundation for further study how so yeah great question so i mean <clears throat> excuse me when i'm uh, when i'm getting ready to preach each week what am, what am i doing um you know, in preparation. Well, I'm starting with just going through the passage, just translating it, making sure I understand the meaning of individual words. And then I'm doing the discourse analysis step of asking, okay, how does each clause relate one to another? And then from that, deriving the larger structure of that passage. So, okay, there's a big set of um, indicative statements ending with this imperative conclusion. Right. And and that's the, the, you know, the payoff then of discourse analysis and then begins all of the other kind of broader exegetical tasks of asking, you know, the synthetic question, OK, how does it fit into the larger book? Um, how does it um, relate to the canon as a whole and point forward to Christ or, or connect to, to Christ and his work? Um, how does therefore it connect to me as a Christian who's united to Jesus? Um, and then, you know, what are practical implications of that? So discourse analysis is, is kind of one of the preliminary steps of the larger exegetical task. Um, and it's a critical one. And, you know, it's interesting. I, I think if you're reading through some commentaries, you can tell the guys who are doing discourse analysis. Mm -hmm. um, because mm -hmm. if you're not doing discourse analysis, what's going to tend to happen is, you know, each little verse will be kind of treated onto itself and there'll be these little, you know, gems here and there. Um, but not a sense of the overarching integration of the passage as a whole. And that's really what I'm trying to encourage people to think about is we've got to see how these things all relate together if we're really going to understand what the passage is saying. Mm 